So, back in 2011, when I was still young and promising, <laughs> I traveled with my parents to Charlottesville in the US for a summer vacation. And while I was there, I heard about this game that my friends kept on talking about, the World Peace game. So I just started playing Risk. It didn't sound like a cooler, bigger version of Risk. So I had my mom find out if I could play. As it turned out, John Hunter, the creator of the World Peace game, had just been to Bergen, my hometown, the year before. And he was happy to invite me to play the game with him. So suddenly I was there, in a room full of third American students. Now, I'm guessing that most of you haven't actually played the World Peace game, so take a minute to explain to you. My comparison to Risk was pretty far off. Because in Risk, you only have one type of resource, and you can only use it to wage war. Whereas in the World Peace game, you can use any resource to do anything at all. I got to be the prime minister of the biggest, most powerful country. And even though I had my two best friends in the cabinet with me, it was a daunting task. We had to manage a country full of factories, illegal drones, nuclear missiles, sunken cities, and ancestral graves. We could do anything in the sea, on land, in air, and even outer space. It felt both empowering and impossible all at the same time. And this was just the first day. We had four more days to go with intense negotiation with the three other countries and the UN, the World Bank, and even arms dealers. When the game starts, the four countries are interlocked in more than 23 crises that puts us on edge of war and collapse. And of course, I wanted to do what's best for me and my country, but so did everyone else. But as the week passed and our interests grounded against each other, we soon learned the value of negotiation and compromise. The rest of the week was kind of a blur between learning new expressions in English, intense negotiation, and finally, the bliss of winning. But what does it mean to win the World Peace game? Playing the World Peace game was like no game I'd ever played before. So winning the World Peace game was like no game I'd ever won before. Coming into the game, I had no idea what to expect. And coming out of the game, I had no clue of how we came up with those solutions that won us the game. And the most sneaky thing of all, it's a teaching tool. Now, I played the game three times, I ran it once, I think I found some of the ways the World Peace game makes me want to learn and evolve. One of my most profound experiences from playing the game is the creativity that is afforded us. I can throw any idea out there and I get immediate feedback from anyone in the room. This creativity will go unchallenged by Mr. Hunter, who would only encourage us to fortify our ideas by asking us a simple question. Have you considered the consequences of these actions? Immediately after winning, I had to go back home. But later that summer, John actually came to Bergen to conduct the first ever international World Peace game, this time with adults. I was put into the role of the youngest news chief ever. But as you can see, I had one significant disadvantage, height. <laughs> Being the only 10-year-old there, I was a bit of an outsider. This gave me ample opportunity to observe the same creativity that I had experienced in the first game. And this very same creativity was used this time to come up with completely different solutions. However, when being asked to assess the game at the midway point, I only gave them one observation. You guys take this way too seriously. And this seems to be a recurring way adults tackle the game. One big difference between this game and the previous one was playfulness it soon became obvious to me how important playfulness was to the game. My third game as a player came last year, where I played in Charlottesville in a master class, where some Norwegian teachers happened to be attending. I got to be the legal counsel, where we approve and oversee all of the different treaties between the players. My compatriots wanted a Norwegian sounding name, so we ended up running Gushant Enterprises. I was still not quite sure how I managed to get them to approve of that name. This was a more formal role than the two previous ones, but we still had a lot of room to influence the game. Our biggest victory came when we managed to negotiate the merger of all the four different countries into one big super state, thereby changing all the discussion from, this is mine, no, it's mine, into this is ours, solving four different conflicts and ensuring the victory in the process. Now, having played the game two times before, I was amazed at how well the game kept me on my toes. And seeing how much the game changes from session to session, 
combined with the combination of playfulness and guided creativity, really empowered me as a player. And this empowerment was useful when talking to the teachers, who want to see more of the game in a Norwegian context. And as it happened, I had access to the perfect people back home, my teachers and classmates. Without any further ado, I gave the email to my teacher, Terje, who's in the room today. Can you maybe stand up, Terje? Thank you. As it happened, Terje Justin John's TED talk about the game was already looking to get a hold of the World Peace game. Our timing could not have been better. Still, I was a bit shocked when Terje announced on the first day of school that this year we're going to play the World Peace game. But Terje was a bit too optimistic. Not because my classmates didn't want to play, because the teachers had to wrap their heads around what they were getting themselves into. Turns out, teaching a teacher to be creative, playful, and empowered is a lot harder than I would have thought. <laughs> However, it is understandable. Take for example and imagine a teacher who's never played a world peace game before is suddenly being asked to submit themselves to any situation happening any time. Then add to the mix 60 rather than 30 students. How can you possibly create something coherent out of that? But as I said, it's a teaching tool and the value of the game goes beyond fun. I cannot tell you how many hours I spent talking about the World Peace game to friends, family, classmates, teachers, really anyone who would like to listen. And this all-consuming interest from in the game comes from inside me, not because anyone has asked me to talk about the game, because I've experienced the game. And now it's so great to see my classmates with the same interest. It's only really interesting to teach my classmates what the game taught me, guided creativity, playfulness, and empowerment. But as I said, the value of the game goes beyond fun. Let me give you an example from the game this August. On game, on game day three, the leader of the World Bank came up to me and said, hey, hey, is it possible to fake checks? Well, why do you ask? We think we found something that might look like a fake signature. Well, maybe you could compare the signatures. This led to a flurry of activities, and soon the World Bank had to re-examine all the checks they previously had approved. As soon enough, a rumor was spreading that somebody indeed had faked checks. Seeing as the beneficiaries gave one billion dollars to receiving country, the chief financial officer of the former country was soon the main suspect. The UN courts opened the court case and charged the CFO with fraud. But this was just the beginning. He hired a powerhouse lawyer, and in the following hour, the two parties accused each other of having bad evidence, incoherent arguments, and being suspicious looking. <laughs> in the end, the UN court decided to reconvene the next day. Still, the case loomed. And attention heightened when the World Bank leader re-entered the room exasperated and, ex and exclaimed, no, I didn't find a check outside in the garbage either. This was following a rumor that the CFO had thrown a check out the window, asking a random passersby to throw it in the trash thereby destroying the evidence. Now, I don't, don't know if you're familiar with burning and weather, but normally people don't volunteer to go outside and search the trash in the pouring rain. The next day, seven witnesses were paraded to the stand. But just as it seemed like the CFO would be let off the hook because of, because of reasonable doubts, some last minute evidence was produced and his real life best friend was called to the stand. They was asked about an audio tape on his phone the tape was played for the court, and the entire room could hear the conversation that followed. So, do you do it or what? <laughs> well, yes, of course, the CFO said. Needless to say, the CFO was convicted. Now, fast forward two, two weeks later, and we were doing a paper on the Norwegian legal system. And one of the key questions mentioned the court case from the World Peace game. The questions were as follows. What court would have seen this case, and why? Could pretrial detention be used for this case? And what evidence was used in, in this case? And could this evidence hold in a real life court case? Discuss. As you can probably figure out, it was way more interesting for me to learn about the Norwegian legal system on the back of my friend, the CFO, than just reading about the formalities of a system in my textbook. 
And now I can't wait to learn about the Cold War. We can just remember how the Prime Minister of Kabarua unilaterally decided to decommission all these nuclear warheads and declaring that they wanted to initiate peace talks with everyone. And now I think that maybe the conflicts in the Middle East over the Jordan River are starting to make sense. But I can just remember how two countries almost declared war on each other over watering their farms from a disputed river. As we discuss in English, history, math, social science, to mention some of it, these discussions will be more and more valuable as the year passes. And this goes to show that the game is a great teacher in itself. And while saying this, I realize how lucky I've been to get into both play and run the World Peace game. And it's my hope that so many more teachers and students will be able to do the same. Our best hope for this to happen is to open up for more guided creativity and playfulness in the classrooms. Then I guarantee you we'll have more empowered students and teachers walking around talking nonstop about world peace. Instead of just reading about peace, it's better to live the peace. Thank you.